All right, in this video, we're going to go over um, a little bit more about modules and then about the design and setting up some of the design aspects of your site. So to start off with, let's go through the theme and logo information. So this is going to vary uh, a lot based on uh, what theme you're using. And like I said, you can preview uh, some of their themes, but um, you know, if you want to discover all, just click this button, it'll take you to Presto Shops area and you can uh, look for themes that you might look like and go through all of the different themes. Okay. Um, they, they vary in price. Um, you know, they got, you know, 170, 65 bucks, uh, 75 bucks, 60 bucks, you know, so that they can vary on up to like $170 depending on how many advanced features they have and, uh, you know, how, how much you, want to be able to edit colors etc if you want you know just take a the theme and take it as it is and not edit a lot of it they tend to be a little bit cheaper than the more versatile themes anyway so you can you know here's your header logo um, invoice and your mail logos and then uh, your favcon which is you know the little icon up here in the store not there but on top of the tab I've got the tab hidden in this video again but uh, and so you can go ahead and, and open those and upload them uh, and if you hover here, you know, theme height, the default theme height is 200 pixels by 440 pixels high. Uh, the favcon, I think, is 30 by 32, or sorry, 32 by 32, or 16 by 16. Um, you can use the favcon generator is what I typically use. Um, and then, you know, your mail logos and your invoice logos. So for these, you just kind of have to create it and then, you know, create, a, look at an invoice and then send yourself a test email. And make sure that those those logo sizes are, are correct. Okay, and now they you know you can choose your layouts, and this again will vary by your theme. Some themes will have another button, but you can you know take your different pages. So come to uh, let's see if we can find where did uh, you know full width with no side columns. Uh, where's maybe see if we can find product page. Where did it go? Uh, well, right there, product page. So your product page is a full width. Um, the category page has two columns, small left column, uh, two columns with a small left column. So you can, you know, pick full width, three column, two column, two column, okay? And your product page is a full width. You may want not want a full width. You might want a three column, a two column. You know, it really depends on the look and the style you want and what theme you are using, okay? And so you can go through and change those pretty easily. Let's go back to the theme and logo page here. Anyway, some themes, when you install them, they'll have a customized theme button right here. And then you can log in, you can go in there, and it'll have ways to really quickly, easily edit and customize the, the theme on your home page. Typically, e commerce, you only do a lot with the home page if you change anything on the categories or uh, your product pages, depending on what you're doing. Um, you know, some of those are actual code edits and some of them are just, you know, I want to add uh, other types of content to the page and that a lot of it is done by your theme. <clears throat> anyway, so take a look at your theme catalog or just play with this, this basic theme here. Uh, and then let's go look at pages. So we talked about this earlier. You can have multiple categories. So if you want, a lot of times I'll create what I call a legal and to put, you know, my secure um, uh, privacy policies. I don't do a secure payment. I do a privacy policy and then a terms and condition, uh, legal notice. Yeah, it's, I guess that could be your privacy poly, policy. Um, but that's typically all I do is privacy po policy and then terms and conditions. And then I do an about us. And then it, depending on what else you want from there, if you're doing, you know, custom forms or, you know, other information, about our products or whatever you want you can add additional pages here and they're just pretty basic uh, simple pages they're not really complicated and, and not tremendously versatile if you need to do some more versatile things I suggest uh, getting uh, maybe an add-on or you're gonna have to code it yourself you can determine whether you want that page indexed or not displayed uh, active and then your you know what category it's under you have multiple categories 
you know, your meta title again, description, keywords. It default added those. I don't use keywords. Friendly URL and then your page content. So I believe this one, let's pop the code here real quick. Yeah, so this is this has been developed, this default again. It, if you actually go look at the website, this is into four or three chunks, three rows. You, they've written it here just using you know, Bootstrap. And you can find Bootstrap editors if you're not familiar with it, where it'll actually create a layout for you, you and then you just pop it in here and then edit your content. So this is divided into three. About Us page, there's probably right here would be row one or column one, column two, column three is, is how they've got this set up. So you can either leave this and go and just edit it, or you can delete it and just write, you know, just keep it real simple. But that's the product page, or the pages, which they now call pages. It used to be called uh, CMS, and now it's called pages. So now we're going to go in here to positions. And again, this is more advanced, uh, and it can be quite overwhelming for a new user. Uh, most of the time, you won't ever have to edit this. You use this if you want to edit where some modules show up. Like if you're adding custom modules, uh, you can edit where you want them to appear. But all in all, you shouldn't ever have to change this. Uh, you know, Amazon Advanced Payments, you, want, you know, Display Admin Order, Back Office. You know, but when you install it, it automatically, see how when I installed that on a previous video, it automatically put the hooks uh, where it, it needed to be in the position, in the right area. So most of the time, you never have to touch this. It's a little bit more advanced here. So image settings is where you can set a lot of the default image sizes. Um, you know, cart, small default, medium default, home, large. And again, a lot of this is controlled. Here's large default. This is the product. You know, if you click on it, it pops up the large image. This is your default size, 800 by 800 pixels. Uh, typically, if you're not familiar, web is uh, 72 DPI. It's going towards 96, but I still do everything I do in 72 DPI. Keep your files small. So the other settings is um, P JPEG versus PNG. Um, PNG, it says use PNG only if the base image is PNG, or you can use PNG for all images. I would never use this. Okay. Um, and the rule of thumb that I always stick to is if it's an image or like a picture, always just save it as a JPEG. Okay. If you're doing like a logo or something that's more... Um, which is called vector. It's not built up of a bunch of little dots, but it's built up using lines. Um, use PNG. I, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but if you don't fully understand that, you know, do a quick research. But like a picture, always use JPEG. A logos, a lot of times I do PNGs. If you if it has to have a clear background or a transparent background, um, PNG is the only one that does transparent. Again, why I use it for logos. Okay, you can do compression. You can do uh, PNG compression. Most of this, just leave it default. You start screwing with some of it, like compressions, and you can uh, mess some things up where it won't work. You know, generate high-resolution images. Uh, you have to be careful because uh, it can slow down your website if you get too big of files. And then you can regenerate thumbnails here. And just know this can take 5-10 minutes. It, it can take a long time to regenerate thumbnails. But if you're adding a bunch of products or, you know, you know, in certain scenarios, you might want to go through and regenerate. Sometimes when you install a module, say, remember to go regenerate thumbnails, and that's where you need to come in here and regenerate those images. Um, and then link widgets. So a link widget is where you can add um, or kind of create some custom link blocks. As you can see, that by default, the default theme, it just has display in the footer. I'll drag this over so you can see it. So here's, move it over. So here's your products. Here's your our company, products, our company. Uh, again, this is kind of default here. This is updated by your contact information we went over in a previous video. I didn't actually update it, but anyway, so you can create now custom link blocks with this. Oops, didn't mean to actually click on that. Um, that you can go through and add these custom link blocks as part of your theme editor and your design. So that's kind of what this little link widget is. This is new um, for 1.7, at least the uh, first time I've ever used it in this type of setting. Most of the themes that I purchased in the past have their own version of this, but now it's uh, uh, native to 1.7. So that, that's kind of your basic uh, design setup. Let's go and look at the module tab real quick. Um, get this here out of the way, out of my screen. So so here's, here's your modules. 
So this is selection. This will load um, kind of their catalog, but if you mainly want to go look at your installed modules area, this will show you all your modules that are installed. See in the previous video, previous video we installed this one, um, and then you can come over here and say configure it, or you can go to the payments because it's a payment module. But um, you can configure it there, and then these are a whole bunch of other modules. These are just default ones. And then down here at the bottom it says 19 theme modules. These are the modules we have theme. So if you install a, a custom theme and you want to edit the modules or depending on how the theme has been developed, you might have to come back here you know, to edit the main menu. Um, uh, and he's upgraded, but let's see if we can uh, configure. So here's the main menu. You know, We created two new categories and deleted the old categories. So the main menu uh, was blank when, uh, if you look at the website, there is no menu. So here's the available items. And we're going to go over here and say, well, I want to add, let's add that, let's add that. And then we'll come over to our, our pages. I want to add the About Us page. Um, and I want to, you know, say you want to show all your manufacturers. Okay. Let's move this one up. Oops. So there. And say Save. And you can add custom links. So let me, I'll open this. Oops. Do it in a new window so it'll pop up here. Shrink this down. Okay, so now we have tables, coloring, all manufacturers, and then when you see how it drops down to manufacturers here, and then the about us. So I can go to the about us page and show you what I was talking about earlier. Okay, so see how it's in the three columns? That's why it's already designed to do that. Um, let's go over to the tables. I think we added a product here earlier. Oh, so there's our product. Anyways, so this is kind of the default uh, theme. This is, if you want to use it, you can. It's, it's really clean and crisp and very modern, depending on your store and how events you want it to be. But that's how you add, with the default theme, that's how you can add um, you know, change your, your menu items up top. Okay. So that's the menu. Let's go back to, uh, back here. And we'll go back down to our, you know, custom text block, main menu. We just changed that, you know, shopping cart, featured products. You know, you come in here and you can configure what you want your featured products to be. Um, social media, if you want to go in here and edit your social media to make sure you have the right link set up there. Your banners, you can change. Um, your image slider, your slideshows on your home page. The My Account block. So that, you know, see My Account block that says Disable. There's nothing to configure here. This is just a code snippet that uh, there's nothing for you to really do. So the ones that say Configure are things that you can go in and edit. And you notice a lot of these say upgrade. Okay, well I'm ignoring that for the moment. Uh, this is a new store and I haven't gone through and upgraded. But let's go to the notifications tab. And now it'll say 36 modules to update. Okay, so here's all the modules that, you know, no, sometimes they'll tell you what has been changed, but currently they're not apparently doing that on really any of those. Um, Okay, and so you can go through here and upgrade these, you know, one at a time, or you know, let's go through. They used to have an upgrade all button, but um, I'm not, I have not seen that yet in Press Shop 1.7. I don't know why not, um, but I haven't seen, you know, just I want them all updated. I don't see that button. But to upload a new one, if you have a new module that you purchase, you just upload it, select it, and away you go. It'll install it, and then you activate it, and then you'll have to go through and configure it. I guess I didn't show you on the themes. It's going to be the same same type of thing. If you're adding a new theme, you just go say add new theme. And then it will ask you, you know, okay, well, where is it at? You can import it from a URL. Um, if, you know, if the document, the company gave you a URL to download it with. Uh, or you can import from, you know, upload it through FTP. And then have it in our archive, and it'll tell you, you know, put it in the themes folder. So I typically just upload it here. It's typically the easiest, unless your web server won't let you. Then you might have to do FTP or download it from another website. Okay, but that's that's the the 
theme. I forgot to show you that imported theme. So that's pretty much it with the modules. Then they have their modules catalog, which you can just you know look for different things to purchase. But all in all, um, that's pretty much the core gist of 1.7, and that's gone through most everything you need to do to get you know products entered, everything set up and running. Uh, and then you, we can do some videos later on customizing your design and your themes and, and making the website look like you want it to if you want to go beyond using the classic, um, which is what their new default theme is called, this classic. Uh, but that's pretty much the gist of Pressure Shop. It's uh, improved a lot since 1.6. Uh, and um, if you ever have any questions, just let us know.